I call myself a world citizen with a national identity, where my identity is not a limitation. I studied in Belgium, I lived in Europe. My wife is in Ethiopia, so trying to sort out and to join me here. My daughters are in Australia. Uh, elder one, she's studying law and economics, uh, Queensland University in Brisbane. And the youngest one, she's studying journalism, Admas. She just turned 19. I'm looking forward to see them maybe for Christmas. In terms of London, you know, people are more in a hurry than in Africa. When you go out, you see people running, everybody's busy with their uh, telephone. And you see rarely people talking to each other. They talk more to their phone. I ask myself, this is going to be my life. <laughs> the first time I joined the IPPF was in 1986, October, as a program officer covering Madagascar and Tanzania. What makes me proud, it's not a charity to go and give. It is building, uniting people who have got different values, who have got different cultural, religious background, nationalities, but coming together because they care about the life of the woman, the child, the adolescents, and all aspects of society interconnected with sexual life. That's what makes me proud. The comprehensive services on sexual reproductive health and rights is a critical and the center of our work. The first thing naturally is that you teach adolescents, you provide information about sexuality, the consequences of some acts, the effects and so on, what are the methods to protect yourself against unwanted pregnancy, then to provide the services. That's important. If it fails, for whatever reason, then somebody should not be a prisoner of that act. There are choices to do abortion services. What I do for the moment is to listen. What do the regions say? What do our partners say? What do our volunteers say? I have a roadmap, but I want also the listening part is also to test my ideas. At times I can be confrontational because I want to push to the limit of the validity of my ideas, the acceptance of my ideas. It's like a conductor's work because when you listen to music, if you just hear each piece of the music, it's like a noise. There should be a synchronized movement. Defining a common purpose, identifying what unites, that's a leadership. You don't come as a savior. You come to build on what you have inherited. In some ways, I see the Olympics, the symbolism of Olympics and what IPPF is. In this sense of coming to peace with the same purpose of enjoying the talent of humanity. That's what Olympics is and that's what IPPF is. This is where the Mandela Square is, and the Mandela Monument. It's small though for his statue. <laughs> really, Mandela is a great man of inspiration, courage, and lesson of resilience. Uh, one of the things that makes me proud of IPPF's work is the recognition of those who fight for freedom and rights, illustrated by the David Cato Vision and Voice Award. David Cato was Ugandan. He was killed as a fighter for sexual rights. And what will to say is, one, people should not lose their life because they fight for somebody's right. And that's the sense why we are giving this award.
again. Mm-hmm. And the right of individuals to choose and to practice what they are has to be embodied in the culture of democracy. That culture has to be a universal value and by the Universal Human Rights Declaration. Okay. By yanda lukan, ilfa alaf soj fito ta wigniminet ya dargalu. AIDS, talala fi beshtan ji wanjala idallam. Tala chan ji, AIDS in wanjala na dargalu. So this is quite a, a challenging agenda. So doing what needs to be ongoing, but also planning the future so the new year is going to be building on what we have inherited and preparing the next phase of action.